Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part two of a two-part series on the Monster Coupon 6G welding test. The Monster Coupon is a heavy wall, roughly it's two and three quarter inch OD and it's about five eighths wall thickness and it's given quite a lot by contractors because it provides a broader range of qualification for thickness as well as diameter. So I'll show a, a quick review of part one of the TIG root and hot pass and then we'll get right into the stick welding. I'll go ahead and tell you it's somewhat of a hodgepodge quilt of a video. I was working at Georgia Trade School with uh, instructor Kyle Lockwood and I just there were just some shots I couldn't get there and so I didn't want to keep going and bothering him so I, I brought a coupon or two home from there with me and I shot some stuff here. You're gonna see me clipping back and forth to here at, at back of my shop to Georgia Trade School with Kyle welding back and forth Hopefully it'll, it'll provide some tips for that young man or woman out there trying to pass this test and feed their family. So let's do it. Before we get into the stick welding, let's do a really quick one minute review of the TIG root and hot pass. I used a keyhole dip method and I'm just using this clear cup just for the sake of filming. I'm pushing a little rod up in there and leaving it in there quite a while and just using just enough heat that I can see it barely keyhole that feather edge. Once I get the root pass in, it's a fairly fairly heavy root pass due to the fact of my pushing rod in there. And that's a good thing as far as suck back goes on the hot pass. The hot pass isn't always hotter than the root pass. Sometimes it is. Here I turned it up about probably uh, 20 amps from the, from the root because it's a pretty big root. And I'm able to go along pretty quickly. And you want to move really quickly across the center. You don't want to suck it back. You don't want to remelt anything on the inside. You just want to add a little metal on there. To get ready for the stick. And now we're ready for the 332 7018 stick and that first pass is going to go in there something like this. We're going to do that starting off with the help of instructor Kyle Lockwood at Georgia Trade School. So I did a lot of, as I mentioned before, I did a lot of going back and forth between my shop and Georgia Trade School. I learned a lot working with Kyle. Had a really good visit. So let's get with Kyle now and make something happen on this stick welding. Now Kyle put a TIG root and a hot pass in and I tried to film that one day and I just couldn't get my camera in the right spots to get any decent shots. He's walking the cup here on his hot pass and about to wrap it up and be have this coupon ready for the first pass on the stick. Lots of ways to skin a cat. You can freehand, you can walk the cup. He freehanded the root and walked the cup on the hot pass which is something I do fairly a good bit of myself. I like to have the ability on the root to move forward and back as well as sideways so I most of the time freehand the root and if it's big enough and things work out I'll walk the cup on the hot pass. All right first pass of stick coming up here we're about 85 to 90 amps here. I'll show the machine uh, at some point in time here it's a Lincoln machine it's got amperage and arc force control as well it's a common machine used in schools Pay attention to Kyle's body positioning here. All right, he's, he's sort of propping with the rod or with a finger to kind of steady it up because 332 rods full length can be a little flimsy. And he's coming up with his, with his arm, his hand and his elbow, and he's, he's, got, to, he's got to get that arm up kind of high because you want to point the rod toward the center of the pipe at all times if possible. There's a little bit of leeway. You can push, have a little bit of a push angle at times. Not a big deal, but if you get way out of scope, you just need to stop and make a restart which is what he's doing now. So for the restart he'll hit it with a wire brush a little bit and then come over the top. You know it's more comfortable to come over the other side over the top sometimes to finish up the last uh, inch or two of a bead if you can't make it all the way to the top. Let me take a second here and talk about arc strikes. Always put your arc strikes inside the bevel where you're going to weld back over them. Do not have any arc strikes out on the walls of the pipe. That's cause for failure. Sometimes you'll get a little leeway if you make a really good looking weld, a good looking coupon, but it is, it is a reason that they can fail you for that. So don't, don't have arc strikes. All right, I'm obviously skipping over some stuff here. There's a lot of passes here. We don't need to show every single pass. We're going to head back to my shop for a minute now and do a little bit of supplemental content that I kind of meant to do at Georgia Trade School, but I didn't have much time there. 6G is fixed position on a 45, which means that's what makes it hard. You're usually going to have one side that's more difficult than the other on a 6G. So a lot of it for me really, really depends on how the rod is chucked up in the stinger. It makes all the difference in the world for me. 
And what I mean by that is this. If you put it in the stinger like this, it's really, if it's angled like that, it's really hard to get the right angles. It's easy to get it on the bottom. I can kneel down here and get it on the bottom, but it's hard to, I can only go about this far, and now I'm gonna be pushing, and it's gonna be a bad rod angle. If I put it in there straight, it's a little bit better. At a 90 degrees, it's a little bit better, but I still gotta really twist my wrist, and I'm still in a jam when I get up like this. Like that, but if I just bend it, and point it down quite a bit, and then grip it down here, now all of a sudden, for me anyway, that makes it way easier. Now I've got a big, I got a big wide straddle here. My legs are straddled out, kind of wide. So I want to, what I want to do is I want to, I want to see, I want to be able to see the top of this thing. So now I'm propped right here. Now I'm just going to keep that prop right there. Now can I, can I come down here and still see? I can. So if I light up right here, I'm kind of already starting to shake a little bit talking to you. But if I light up right here, I'm only going to be uncomfortable for just a just a few seconds. As I light up there and as I weld, I'm going to turn my wrist, keep turning my wrist, and that's going to keep my rod angle like it needs to be. And watch my left foot over here. Yep. As I get as I get up halfway here, I can I can kind of do this number, do the old boilermaker shuffle, you know, and get on up to the top without it affecting how steady I can hold the rod up there. So that works for me. Lots of guys just grab it with their left hand. Well, one side, right hand the other, but that 332 rod's kind of flimsy. I like to be able to prop, especially on a welding test. Uh, the main thing is passing the welding test, is not being able to weld with both hands. It's and as long as I remember to keep, to keep turning my wrist here as I come up, I can keep a pretty good angle and see where I'm going all the way from bottom to top without stopping. On the other side, my rod's gonna be about that short when I get to the top here. And I know that I'm fairly comfortable right here, so I propped with my pinky right here, and all I'm going to do is, is tilt my body over, light up, and as I'm, as I'm coming, twist my wrist, keep the rod poked in there straight, and then of course it'll be about this short when I get up here, and I should be able to see everything without being too uncomfortable or too shaky. Alright, this is sped up to about 20x, I think, and uh, just to show body positioning as, it, as I roll up. Keeping that wrist turned. Trying to keep that rod pointed toward the center axis of the pipe. Keeps a favorable rod angle so I won't be trapping any slag or anything. Got a nice wide stance here. As I get halfway up, I shuffle just a little bit so I can get high enough to get a good line of sight. All right, well, that's where I am right now. Not too great, not too horrible. Let's clip back now to Kyle with Georgia Trade School. He's about the same point. We're going to get some of his perspective on how he does his and how he holds his arms and hands and all that stuff. It's always good to have more than one perspective. Again, we're about 90, 85 to 90 amps arc force set on zero, which is mid range here, which is probably a good idea. If you're not familiar with a machine and it has arc force, just set it mid range. You won't be too far out of whack. All right, you're gonna come up the, the right hand side here and kneel down for half of it and then make a, a tie in halfway. That's one way also. Notice how close his, his eyes are to the arc. You know, when I was in my 20s, I could do that too. I can't now. I mean, my eyes have just changed. I got to get further away. My fitter used to always say, I don't understand how you're even seeing that thing up that close. And I, I would thought, well, how do you not see it? But now that I'm a little older, I totally get it. But hey, if you're young and you can see it, get up on it. Good idea to keep your face out of the smoke plume whenever you can, though. All right, pay attention to the body positioning here again. There's always something to learn watching somebody weld one of these. Now I'm going to speed the clip up just a little bit here so you can see how his angle changes, how his arm comes up high, and also a little clip in a little arc shot here of where he's at on the, uh, on the piece. This is, this is the, I guess, the second to the last bead for the cover pass. Like I said, 20, about 20 beads it takes to fill this thing up. And he's breaking off and going to make a restart there. I take that back. This is, the, this is the second to the last one. When you're making that last one, if you get any undercut at all and you barely tie into the edge, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and run another quick one. 
you know, not a big one. You don't want to be, you don't want your cover pass to be super wider than the opening, but you don't want the undercut either. Now, because of how long this test takes and my time was limited, I just got Kyle to run half of this coupon so you could see how they stack in there like that. I'm heading back to my workshop now. I'm going to cover a few more tips before I wrap this up. All right, when you're starting on the bottom, you don't want porosity. And if you just start and go, a lot of times you'll get it. So you kind of light up, long arc it for a second, go back, and then weld over all that crud that you deposited while you were long arcing. That's the general consensus on the way to avoid porosity on the start of a bead and also kind of lets the rod heat up for just a second to get a good start. And again, no arc strikes on the base metal visible after the weld is done. You want all your arc strikes to be welded back over. You notice the smoke here, the fume, really getting sucked up that that uh, blower there. That's a 12 inch utility blower, blower I got from Northern Tool. Uh, it's just sort of a way to get the fume out of the way for number one, I don't want to breathe it. Number two, it helps for filming. There's no filter or anything on it. It's, there's no hose on it. It's just a, like a, it's like a fume extractor, except it just gets the smoke out of the way. Working pretty good. And I can set it up and I can use it for a fan or I'm, in this case, I'm, again, I'm using it for sort of a, to extract the fume to suck it away you can even you can even see the the fume being drawn away right there it helps to see so if you're in a test shop that has a snorkel uh, fume extractor by all means get it not in your way but get it where it's pulling the fume away that'll help you see better now i'm just speeding things up here so you can get a get a really good idea of body positioning on on the way that I do this thing I've shown you a little bit already here's another idea for a prop just to give you another perspective I've seen this done before this is a strong hand tools uh, chain vise here chain pliers locking chain pliers that's what they're called that's a way to prop too it just it's not cheating to find a way to prop that's just smart welding Twisting the wrist, keeping that rod pointed toward the center of the pipe. That's the name of the game. Getting close to being done here with this thing. I'll show you the end result here in just a few minutes. That's ready to cap now. I'm just a little bit below flush probably just a little bit low so I'm gonna to have to stack my beads tight enough not to have any low places we'll see how that works out you want to be just slightly below flush before the before the cover pass so it worked out decent I wouldn't say that I'm gonna put a blue ribbon on this or anything but you know having not really done this in quite a few years I guess that's that's a start a big thanks to Kyle the instructor and to the whole crew at Georgia Trade School for working with me on this video. I really hope it helps somebody pass a test, get a raise, help support their family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.